Today is Father's Day and we from Highlands Presbyterian Church would like to wish all those fathers out there a happy Father's Day and we do hope that you enjoy the service today. God bless. Good morning everyone. My name is Wendy Lodes and I'm a member of the Siabua team that support and look after Vicky up in Siabua at her mission station. Um, I've been asked to just give you some feedback on our recent visit up to Siabua. Uh, it was a it was a nine hour trip on rather ghastly roads, but we made it there safely. And um, we've been praying for this trip for, for several weeks now as to what God is wanting us as a team to be doing up in Siabua to help Vicky and to further God's kingdom amongst the Tonga people. It came back very clearly through all of us, to all of us, that um, God is wanting us to build relationships in Siabua. And the only way, can, way, way that we can do that is to have people on the ground in Siabua to help Vicky with discipling those people that we are reaching out to. So our trip was, um, was really around meeting with the, with the groups that we have um, been um, discipling and growing. Um, these are the farmers mainly. We we have been teaching them farming God's way. Um, Elisha and Pete have been visiting on a regular basis with members of Foundations for Farming uh, to help them. And we've tried to persuade them also to move from maize growing to uh, small grains like sorghum and millet to sesame and to growing chilies as a cash crop. And we, we feel that we've become, we, they're um, getting far, far better at doing this and they're accepting this as, as the way forward. And so we had a great meeting with the chili farmers and brought back 230 kgs of dry chilies to be sold in Harare. And also the sorghum farmers, their harvest was good. We've had, uh, they had great rains this year. So the harvest has been good and they're busy uh, bagging their, their crop for sale to, um, to the people in uh, Harare that are willing to take it. And then also we met with um, the leaders of these farmers and with the four girls who have been doing the sewing project up in Siabua for us on, on our behalf. And the four of them meet twice a week at Vicky's uh, homestead and have been making reusable sanitary pads uh, to distribute to the high school pupils, high school girl pupils. So, um, on this trip, we did our first distribution. Um, we had, the, over the last six months, they've managed to put together over 200 bags, which contain five reusable pads, a flannel and a bar of soap, and also a pair of, uh, of underwear. So this we took along to Siabua High School, um, our first morning in, in the valley. And it was just um, amazing to see how delighted the girls were, um, how delighted the ladies were as they see the, 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 the outcome of their six months of hard work, um, to see the, the happiness and the joy on the faces of the girls as they received their little gift. And also it was an opportunity for us to have a captive audience for the gospel we shared the gospel with all 211 girls and um, we had one of the sewing ladies translate for us. And at the end of the session, all 211 girls raised their hands to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. This was quite um, an emotional thing for all of us. And we just 
ask you all to pray for the Lord to um, water the seed that has been sown amongst those girls. And we're hoping that the four sewing ladies will, will be there to um, disciple them, to work with these girls, to just encourage them, to love them, to give them advice on and, and answer questions that they might have. And we're just praying that this will just be the start of a huge um, revival in those schools up there because it's very tough and um, life is tough in Siaboa. So we, we, we're hoping that this is the start of something new for all of them. Um, the ladies, the sewing ladies also, of course, have 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 agreed to to help with all these girls, as has Vicky. Unfortunately, Vicky is so busy in her clinics, she's seeing up to 150 patients a day. So at the end of the day, she's pretty exhausted, but she is ministering to all her patients. And um, we're hoping that they'll come to realize that going to the prophets and, and, and speaking to them is not um, the way to get healing. And so... Um, it's uh, something that we'd like you to pray about as well, that these people realize that the prophets are not the answer and that God and Jesus is the answer. And that they come to Vicky first, because more often than not, they go to the prophets. And by the time they get to Vicky, it's either too late or it's a lot harder for her to, to do the healing on these on these children and 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 others so we just thank you i'd like to thank all of you who have um, contributed to these projects in cash or in kind um, and if you are able at this point we've still got another three schools to distribute the pads to and the girls are needing extra soaps and um, little toweling flannel. So if you if you're able, we would be most grateful for any contributions you can make to the to the um, the balance of these of these bags that we're making. So that every like every single um, menstruating girl to have a bag. Um, by the end of by the end of this year so thank you very much thank you for your prayers thank you for your prayers for vicky um co please continue to uplift her she's tired and um she needs all uh, the help she can get she needs your prayers to to give her god's strength for her to get through each day um she is coming back into town shortly so we hope to encourage her and we hope that you will have the opportunity to encourage her as well. Um, thank you so much for all your, your donations towards the meds. We continue to supply all her meds and um, praise God for his provision because we always seem to have enough. And um, we will be uh, pill packing um, this coming week, but obviously not at the church. We're going to have to make another plan. But thank you very, very much for your um, contributions in cash and in kind and in your time. So thank you once again. And we praise God for a, another successful trip to Siabua. And please keep those people in your prayers as we, as we bring God's light into a very dark place. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome from my humble home to yours. This is Claire Norris from Highlands Presbyterian Church and I'm excited to be with you today and share God's word. Can I just say Happy Father's Day to all those who are listening in today. Our prayer is that you feel secure in your relationship with your father and gain your identity from him so that you are able to fulfill your role here on earth wherever God has placed you. The author, Arthur Gordon, captured his father's essence in this way. My father had, to a marvellous degree, the gift of opening doors for his children, of leading them into areas of splendid newness. This surely is the most valuable legacy we can pass on to the next generation. Not money, not houses or heirlooms, but a capacity for wonder and gratitude a sense of aliveness and joy. 
In Proverbs 27, verse 7, it says, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Perhaps you feel like you've got, gotten off onto the wrong track and are afraid of leaving the wrong kind of legacy. It is not too late. Ask God to help you leave a brand new legacy. A legacy of integrity that points all to come in contact with you towards Jesus. My prayer is that these words encourage and strengthen you today. And also today, I'd like us to close the service with breaking bread as a family. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to press pause and prepare the elements. When you're ready, let us start the message by praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What an amazing prayer and powerful words that we say in which we are acknowledging God as our Father, acknowledging His sovereignty and His rulership over heaven and earth. In the prayer, we ask the Lord to provide for our daily needs, as He is our provider. And in saying that, trust Him to do just that, provide. He alone knows our every need and therefore knows just how and what to provide and in his good timing, although I think there are often times we could disagree on the timing. We ask the Lord to forgive us. We seek repentance for the things that we have done or said that go against his way of life. And that is followed by, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now this is hard. In our humanness, we often hold on to anger or frustration at something that was done that harmed us or hurt us. It is hard to say, God, you've got this and I can let it go and allow God's grace and mercy to heal me and the person whom I believe has trespassed against me. In this prayer, we seek courage and strength from the Lord not to be tempted to do wrong in his eyes but to continually follow him. If our hearts are constantly looking for Jesus and all that we do, the awesome fact is that God's grace is abundant. There is a group, an artist called Stars Go Dim. They sing a song, If It Is Amazing Grace. And some of the lyrics go as follows. There comes a time when we all take a breath, admit who we are, with all of our mess. Stand there and tremble and hope for the best, knowing it's out of our hands. But if it is amazing grace, then let it do what it does. It can reach far beyond anything we have done. Truth is, there's just some things that cannot be explained. It's gonna find a way if it is amazing grace. I know my heart's been changed by this amazing grace. That is the truth. God's grace is amazing and we are to let it do what it does. Once again, we have been thrown a curveball in life as we yo-yo in levels of lockdown. And I have found that most of the people I've come across this week are just fed up and frustrated by what is happening around us. Almost like a pressure cooker ready to blow. The steam needed to come out somehow. It is not easy to stop and take a breath and say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in all of this? For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Which means, let it be so. We have felt that so many things have been taken away from us. We are frustrated. But the one thing that has not shifted or been removed 
is Jesus. He is there holding out his hand saying, Come my friend, let us journey together. I am here and I never change. Jesus is always asking to be your best friend, to spend more time with you every day. He wants to know you more and wants you to know him better too. Charles Spurgeon writes this, God does not need your strength. He has more than enough power of his own. He asks for your weakness. He has none of that himself and he is longing, therefore, to take your weakness and use it as an instrument in his mighty hand. Will you not yield your weakness to him and receive his strength? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being strong when I am not. Thank you for understanding my weaknesses and for loving me. Father, help me to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help me to give myself always to others, being kind to everyone I meet. Holy Spirit, help me to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all I do and say, Amen. We're now going to listen to a song and then after that we will break bread together. <laughs> breath admit who we are with all of our mess stand there and tremble and hope for the best knowing it's out of our hands but if it's amazing grace let it do what it does it can reach far beyond
One of the ways to know and to acknowledge Jesus is to break bread. We often call it the Lord's Supper, not because we do it at supper time, but because it was instituted at a supper. You can read Matthew 26, 26. The Lord was eating the Passover supper with his disciples. It was a very special feast of the Jews. Jesus knew he was facing death and he wanted to give them a simple, easily available way to refresh their memories of him. He wanted them to remember every time they ate a meal. Bread and ju grape juice were staples in his day. Today we break bread because the Lord is always here when we participate. And if we come to the Lord's table on a Sunday, we should live for him all of the week. We are part of the family of God and a family eats together at the same table and invites Jesus to join in. This should prompt us to think about our place within God's family. So wherever you are, take time now to break bread. You can lift the bread and say, take and eat. This is my body, as Jesus said. And the juice. Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, that is poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Jesus, for being our Lord and our Saviour. We thank you for the time that we have spent together with you. We thank you that you journey with us each and every day. We just acknowledge you today and just give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>